I paid $1,200 for this custom portable GameCube from Etsy, and in this video, we'll take an in-depth look at it and see if it was worth the money. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy up, and there it is. Oof, looks so nice. Man, this is supposed to be black, but that's not really... It looks more grayish, honestly, but that's actually a very nice color. Ooh, I, I like that. Uh, so, obviously, we have a charging cord, a charging brick. Got a nice little custom cutout for the portable GameCube, and uh, yeah, let's take a... Let's take a closer look at it now. So if you guys have watched my channel before, you've probably seen a custom portable that looked kind of like this before, and that's because it's based on the same design or a similar design. Uh, this one I bought from Etsy though, obviously the other one came from eBay. This one came from G-Man himself, who is known as one of the top uh, modders in the community. So pretty excited to check this out. I got high expectations for this. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and take a closer look. So like I said, it looked black in the pictures, but it looks more grayish here. And I actually really like it. Um, obviously 3D printed. Uh, it's called the Ishida design. And uh, yeah, it's got, just feels very nice, feels premium. I think he said in the description what uh, type of 3D material was used to print this. Uh, not sure off the top of my head, but I'll throw it on the screen. So let's go ahead and take a look at the front. So obviously it's modeled after a GameCube controller. So basically you take a GameCube controller, you stretch it out, you put a screen in the middle, and that's what this is. Um, and it feels just like a GameCube controller. So you've got your uh, left analog stick here. No resistance, feels great. Got your D-pad here, C stick, which feels very nice. B, A, Y, and X. and you got your triggers, your Z buttons. Actually, got a second Z button um, as like a modifier, and all the buttons feel very nice, very premium. The other GameCube portable I had had a few like kind of hiccups here and there. This one so far seems like perfect, honestly. Um, looking at the back, you have a little hole right here, uh, assuming that's for a fan. Here on the top, you got some more ventilation. Looks like a heat sink on the inside, and then of course a USB-C charging port. You can also, of course, uh, transfer your data to here. Basically, this is based off of um, RV Loader, which is a custom-built software that allows you to play your Wii, Nintendo Wii on the go. So there's actually Nintendo Wii hardware inside of here. I call it a GameCube because clearly it was modeled to be a GameCube, but it can play Wii games and GameCube games. GameCube compatibility is actually a bit better because obviously it's like this is a GameCube controller and a lot of Wii games you need a Wii remote, so those games don't always work great. But uh, yeah, so here on the bottom, we've got a few more buttons. One here, one here, got a switch, got an auxiliary jack, I'm assuming the volume rocker. And uh, yeah, it's just two speakers up here. This thing looks very nice. I'm excited to turn this thing on. So I guess I'll do the honors. Let me go ahead and peel this protective layer off the screen. Give us the nice crisp screen here. Ooh, yeah, that looks nice there. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and turn this on. Assuming this switch down here turns it on. Let's see. And nothing. All right, it might need to be charged. So let me go ahead and plug it in and see if we can charge it up. All right, it's turning on now. Uh, it appears I just needed to plug it in to uh, get some charge to it. It's, so I, I, I forgot that usually these things are shipped in shipping mode where you have to plug in the charger for it to basically boot up. And there's some cool stuff in here. So we have select, let's go here, select theme, background image, solarized, sure, why not? We'll do save config and we'll see what this looks like. Background still looks about the same to me, but maybe that changes on a different screen. Let's go down to controller so you can test out the buttons. As you can see, that's pretty cool. You can see your analog stick there, your C stick, your D-pad. I think down here is your start button, maybe. There we go. That's my start button down there. So on the left side, start button. B, A, X, Y, or excuse me, Y, X. That's the button. There, there. Hold A and B to activate rumble. I'm pretty sure we do not have rumble on this. It would be pretty sweet, but honestly, it'd probably mess up the insides. Let's go ahead and go back. Sticks wizard, sticks dead zone, triggers mode. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave all that as is. And this kind of, this is kind of cool. So we got some power settings here, or some power stats, excuse me. Uh, you can see our charging current. You can see your, uh, your charging voltage. You can see what kind of power button you're using. So we can we can actually make it so that it's a toggle button like this, or you can make it so that you just have to flick it up once and it'll turn on, flick it up again, turn off. Bunch of cool stuff here. Let's go ahead and go back, status, about. And if you use a C stick, you can change which page you're on. So uh, if you go to home, I think that's where we're at right now. Actually, never mind. All right, booting back up. So yeah, we were in settings. Home does nothing, right, GameCube. So if you go here, you can see your GameCube games. Obviously, oh, we have Super Smash Bros. on here. All right, I thought it came with no games, but we do have one game. Um, we got Wii games on here. We got Mario Kart Wii. We got Wii Virtual Console, which does classic games. Then we have this uh, little, it looks like a Super Nintendo controller. I'm pretty sure that does nothing right now. Uh, we got Homebrew, so you can see your Homebrew apps. So let's see what we have on here so far. We got BB Loader, Nintendo, and RV Loader. I love I love the names that, that modders come up with uh, for these. And we got our uh, Wii Homebrew, or excuse me, our Wii Channels, and then back to our settings, which is what you just saw. So let's go ahead and go to the GameCube, um, and we'll just play some Smash Bros. So first, I think we need to configure our game so you can force progressive. Uh, should be on yes. Force widescreen, no. 
Um, I think what we can do is there's something we can do. Yeah, we can conf configure our button selection. So this is pretty cool. I guess G-Man already went in and, and uh, configured the button selections because everything matches up so far. We'll go ahead and just boot it up and, and see if it plays. And here we are booting up. And I got to say, the screen on here is pretty nice. I'm pretty sure it's an IPS screen, which makes sense because you can see it pretty well from, from most viewing angles. And man, it's just, I don't know. I love these portable consoles, especially... Just the looks of this one are insane. It looks just like a GameCube controller. I need to pull out a GameCube controller and do a little comparison. But for now, let's play some Smash Bros. Pretty satisfied so far. Honestly, this is even a good bit better than the other one I bought. Everything is pristine. No issues. Speakers sound good. This is working amazing. The uh, screen looks really good. All the buttons are very responsive. There's no dead zones, at least that I've found so far in any of the any of the analog sticks, the analog stick or the, the C stick. Um, triggers feel good. Man, this is, I'm impressed. So we've explored the menus, tried out a GameCube game. Everything seems to work great so far. Screen looks good. Uh, I want to do a few comparisons though. So first of all, this thing look, looks exactly like a GameCube controller. So let's take an actual GameCube controller and just compare. And I mean, as you can see, the left side looks the same, right side looks the same, and then there's a screen sandwich in the middle. Uh, you know, the only thing I think might be slightly different is I think the handle might protrude a little bit further out on the actual GameCube controller than here. Um, but I do think this one feels very nice. I don't, have any complaints at all um, might actually feel nicer than the gamecube controller maybe and i also want to compare to the other gamecube portable i have so let me pull that up so here we are and they're they're basically twins they look almost the same uh, but there are some key differences so first of all this one's white this one's like a blackish gray uh, the build quality on this one feels just better like the buttons feel better uh, the analog stick on this one is not the best i think it's a third party analog stick which is a little bit disappointing on a, a device that expensive uh, C stick is not quite as good. The, D, the buttons are not bad, but it, you can just tell when you play it the build quality is not not quite as good. Um, I'm not gonna call it bad by any means, but just not not quite the same level. And then like little things like the bottom here, there's a there's a fairly large gap there, and on this one, there's a tiny gap, but not too much. I mean that's not a big deal, but. Uh, just something to point out and then real quick i just want to compare the screens because i do think they used slightly different screens the two builders um this one on the white one is a bit brighter uh the black one is a bit darker but uh you know I, it's kind of debatable which one looks better um this one if you like really bright this one's good if you like just I, I guess more accurate colors maybe this one i think looks better it's harder to compare because it's not exactly the same screen or not exactly the same stuff on the screen so we got some comparison out of the way let's go ahead and turn this one back on and we're gonna explore a little bit more and I'll show you a few more things. So I went ahead and plugged into my PC um, and loaded up some more games. So now we have some virtual console games, which we'll try out. Also have a channel on here, a Wii channel. So let's go ahead and try out a virtual console game. Now the thing is with, uh, with RV Loader, virtual console games are kind of hit or miss. So uh, not sure if it'll even work, but I got four games loaded up on here. So we'll, we'll see if at least one of them works. So I finally have a virtual console game booting up. We got Super Mario World and ooh, that, that color looks nice. It isn't widescreen, but uh, it is working for now. And I tried a bunch of Nintendo 64 games, none of them worked. Um, and from looking at BitBuilt's forum, it seems that that's typical. Um, for whatever reason, a lot of Nintendo 64 games don't work on the, uh, the RV loader. And I'm not sure if my controls are configured correctly. That works, yeah, I can jump. I haven't, I don't think Y and X are assigned correctly though. Uh, that game works great. I did try, <laughs> I tried downloading the Mii channel and playing that. That did not work. Uh, not surprising, but most GameCube and Wii games should work. Now let's try Mario Kart for the Wii, which we already had on here. Uh, we'll try booting that up and just see how it works. Now, if you want to play a Wii game on here that uses motion controls um, and you know you have to point at the screen, that sort of thing, you can play those games, but you have to assign your controls so that uh, basically your motion, like if you're pointing at the screen, assign is assigned to a button on here. So you can like assign your Wii remote to the C stick and, and basically point at the screen and emulate the uh, the little hand that's on the screen. Kind of cool, but pretty pretty cumbersome. So I'm not going to do that in this video, uh, but it's just just something to point out that you can do on this device if if you want to. So I'm playing Mario Kart Wii and it works great. Uh, no issues at all. Yeah, I mean, this thing's awesome. I think the next thing we want to do is open this bad boy up and see how it looks on the inside. I do want to compare it to the insides of the other uh, portable GameCube I have and just see see how it compares, but I'm, I'm expecting pretty good things from this one. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what it looks like inside. And then we'll do a comparison. So first of all, nice. This one is very easy to open. The uh, two Z buttons fell out, but that's kind of expected. And we just have a few wires flexing between the top and bottom. Other than that, it, this thing looks extremely nice in the inside. All the custom boards are in place. We've got our, our C stick over here, our analog stick over here, our buttons up here. We got our triggers are, are on the, the back side here. And of course, this board right here is a screen. Uh, we do have a piece of electrical tape basically protecting these contacts from 
uh, this custom board right here, which appears to be have something to do with uh, controlling the uh, controlling the buttons so that um, they go to the appropriate price 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 on the on the Wii motherboard. Which, by the way, this is actually a Wii motherboard in here trimmed down, uh, which is amazing. It's amazing how small these things can be trimmed down and still work properly. Because uh, obviously, if you've seen a Wii, it's like you know that size, and then it's trimmed down to this little piece right here. We have two identical batteries. Uh, the weights are even, which is nice. I I've seen some portables where both batteries on one side and the, the portable is like lopsided. So this is nice that they're both uh, spread out to the sides. And then if you look closely here, you can see the uh, Kingston uh, flash drive here, which keeps all of our, our games and whatever other files you want to load onto the device. And then we have some more custom circuitry down here. Everything lines up so nicely with the outside of the, the case. You can tell this guy's been doing this a long time. And now let's go ahead and do a comparison to the other one. Um, you know, they should look pretty similar, but honestly, the, the, there should be some differences as well. So let's go ahead and break this bad boy open. And here we go. And oh yeah, that looks a lot different actually. All right, so clearly the makeup is pretty similar. We do have the same custom boards on the right and left side for the analog sticks, um, C stick and analog stick. And for these little stoppers right here, we got the same uh, the same ribbon cable that slides across. The uh, motherboard being trimmed is, is very similar. Obviously, they're, they're each trimmed slightly differently. It does appear that we do have slightly different batteries. They might be the same battery, just a different color. Uh, not quite sure. We do see our Kingston uh, flash drive down there, just like on here. But honestly, the main difference is probably the screen. Uh, as you can see, clearly this one is a blue motherboard. This one's green. Um, they do have a pretty similar layout, like the chip is in the same spot. The ribbon cable here is in the same spot. Um, there are some differences, but clearly they're slightly different screens, at least because they look different and then the circuitry is a bit different. But then if you look at the custom circuitry below the Wii motherboard, it does appear to be exactly the same because there is a, it's a black motherboard on this side and on this side, and all the controls at the bottom sit in the same spot. So um, I would say the build quality on the black one is a bit better than the white one. Uh, white one's not bad, but I think the buttons are just not, not quite as good for whatever reason. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and uh, have a great day.